ever pondered over the stark differences between the USA and Japan, two nations, each a powerhouse in its own right, yet contrasting in so many ways. The USA, with its impressive skyscrapers, fast-paced lifestyle, and melting pot of cultures. Japan, on the other hand, a mesmerizing blend of tradition and modernity, where ancient temples stand tall amidst neon-lit cityscapes. It's more than just geography that separates these two nations. It's a divergence in cultural ethos, societal norms, and technological advancements that sets them apart. Japan, an island nation in the Far East, has always fascinated the world with its unique culture, a culture deeply rooted in respect, discipline and harmony. A society where the collective is given precedence over the individual, where etiquette and manners are not just expected, but ingrained from a young age. Technologically, Japan is a pioneer, leading the world with its innovative and futuristic inventions. From robotics to high-speed trains, Japan's technological prowess is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Yet, they have managed to strike a delicate balance, preserving their rich cultural heritage while embracing the future. The USA, a beacon of freedom and opportunity, is a nation built on diversity and individualism, a place where innovation thrives and dreams are nurtured. Yet, in this relentless pursuit of progress, certain aspects of life often take a back seat. So, here we find ourselves observing a fascinating dichotomy. Two nations poles apart, yet influential in their own ways. Two societies, each with its unique strengths and weaknesses, offering invaluable lessons to each other and the world. The question then arises, how can these differences be harnessed? How can the strengths of one nation be used to address the weaknesses of the other? How can the USA, a nation that prides itself on its forward-thinking ethos, learn from Japan's unique blend of tradition and modernity? So, what can the USA learn from Japan? Let's unfold this interesting narrative. Ever notice the impeccable discipline and respect in Japanese culture? Let's take a moment to dive into this fascinating aspect. Japan's culture is intricately woven with threads of discipline and respect, shaping a society that is admired globally. This isn't just about bowing or removing shoes at the door. It goes far deeper, influencing aspects of daily life we often take for granted. Imagine stepping onto a train during peak hours and being welcomed by silence despite the crowd. This is a typical scene in Japan where public spaces are treated with respect and noise is minimized to avoid disturbing others. This level of consideration extends to cleanliness, with streets often spotless despite the scarcity of public trash cans. The discipline to carry one's trash until a bin is found is ingrained from childhood, contributing to an environment that is clean and inviting. These cultural practices aren't just aesthetic, they have tangible effects on society, one of which is Japan's remarkably low crime rate. Respect for others and the law, coupled with a disciplined approach to life, creates a society where crime is the exception, not the rule. Now, picture a bustling city where trains arrive with precision down to the minute. This is a reality in Japan where discipline translates into efficient public transportation. The system operates like clockwork, a testament to the discipline of its operators and respect for people's time. But it's not just about following rules. It's about a collective responsibility, a shared understanding that everyone's actions impact the community. This sense of responsibility is deeply rooted in Japanese culture, fostering a society that functions smoothly. These examples illuminate how the USA could potentially benefit from adopting a similar approach. Imagine a society where respect for others and discipline aren't just ideals, but a way of life. A society where cleanliness is a shared responsibility, public spaces are respected, and crime rates are low. This isn't about copying another culture, but learning from it, understanding the value of discipline and respect, and seeing how these values can shape a better society. These examples illuminate how the USA could potentially benefit from adopting a similar approach. Japan's approach to work-life balance might surprise you. The land of the rising sun, Japan is a nation renowned for its dedication to work, but it's also a country that is taking strides to ensure that its citizens have a healthy work-life balance. Let's delve into some interesting case studies that highlight Japan's efforts in this regard. Picture a typical Friday afternoon in a bustling Tokyo office. As the clock strikes 3 p.m., there's a palpable shift in the atmosphere. Employees start winding down their work, packing up their things, and heading home. This is not a scene from a parallel universe, but a reflection of an initiative known as Premium Friday. 
Launched by the Japanese government in 2017, Premium Friday encourages companies to let their employees leave at 3 p.m. on the last Friday of every month. The goal? To curb excessive work hours and to promote a healthier work-life balance. It's a move to integrate relaxation and personal time into the traditionally work-intensive Japanese culture. The impact of this initiative is far-reaching. It's not just about employees getting extra hours of rest or leisure, it's about creating an environment where work doesn't consume one's life entirely. It's about fostering a culture that values personal well-being as much as professional success. Moreover, this isn't an isolated move. There are other policies in place as well, like limiting overtime to a maximum of 45 hours a month. These changes reflect a broader shift in Japan's corporate culture, from a work-till-you-drop mentality to a more balanced approach. What's particularly interesting is how this shift is not just a top-down directive, but a societal change. Companies are increasingly recognizing the benefits of a balanced workforce, better productivity, increased creativity, reduced burnout rates, and improved employee satisfaction. So what can the USA learn from this? Perhaps it's time to reevaluate our own work culture. Maybe we need to place more emphasis on ensuring that our work isn't overshadowing our lives. Adopting similar initiatives could greatly improve work-life balance in the USA. Japan's technological prowess is undeniably impressive. A land where the future seems to coexist with the present, Japan has given the world a glimpse of what is possible when technology is harnessed to its full potential, from the intricacies of robotics that have redefined the manufacturing sector to the highly efficient public transportation systems that have streamlined daily commutes. Japan's technological advancements are indeed a marvel to behold. These innovations aren't merely for show, they serve a purpose, enhancing the quality of life for the people of Japan. Robotics have not only improved productivity, but have also stepped in to assist in elder care. Public transportation systems, punctual to the second, have reduced the stress of commuting, giving back precious time to the Japanese people. Japan's focus on technological innovation is not just about creating gadgets, it's about creating solutions, improving lives. The USA could benefit immensely from emulating Japan's focus on technological innovation. So what have we learned from our exploration? We've delved into the intriguing dichotomy between the United States and Japan, revealing some valuable insights. The Japanese culture of discipline and respect, for instance, could truly bring about a transformative change in the American society, fostering a more harmonious and respectful community. We also looked at Japan's focus on work-life balance. In a world where burnout is all too common, adopting such an approach could significantly improve the quality of life for many Americans. Let's not forget the technological advancements. Japan's commitment to innovation and progress is something that the USA could definitely draw inspiration from, potentially leading to incredible advancements in various sectors. But remember, it's not about blindly copying these aspects. It's about gleaning from these lessons and adapting them to our unique context. Because at the end of the day, as we've seen, there's a lot the USA can learn from Japan. But it's not about copying. It's about adapting these lessons to create a better society.